Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, April 14th to Saturday, April 20th. So last week, of course, it was a banger of a week because we popped off with that new moon total solar eclipse in Aries energy and take a good look around. The world has not ended. Very, very limited people had their eyeballs burnt out. I would say that considering the fear mongering that went on prior to this eclipse event, we fared pretty well. Of course, we're still very much in this eclipse energy. We will be for the next coming of weeks. And not only did we have that potent eclipse energy really stirring the pot, really creating this renewal, this resurrection energy, but we also had 10 different conjunctions, which means that there were 10 different points of reset that took place over the course of this last week. And of course, we just hit the halfway mark of Mercury's retrograde. So things are finally starting to become semi-clear. And when I say that, I mean that no longer are we fully entrenched in the past. We're kind of at this halfway point. The understanding, the presence, the clarity is now kind of being realized in this present moment. We're going to start piecing together the path moving forward from this point in, especially reflecting back on the past, on the revelations, on the insights, on those aha moments, and integrating them as we make plans, strategies for moving forward. So it's going to be a very interesting dynamic as we start walking towards the direct energy that of course is coming at us on the 25th. If you need to go ahead, take a listen to the April energy forecast to kind of remind yourself of the energy events that we still have coming at us here in April. It is not over. Okay, the eclipse energy, yeah, major deal, but we still have some major, major astrology coming at us over the next couple of weeks. And we're definitely going to be diving into that towards the end of this week. So what do we have going on this week, you may ask? Well, first, we are going to have our very first quarter moon taking place in Cancer Energy. This is going to be on the 15th. And the first quarter moon of any lunar phase is a time where we start to realize clarity, where we start gaining answers, where we start kind of realizing where it is that we have a choice point, we have a decision point, we have an action point. Now, the moon is in a rulership in Cancer energy, so expect to feel all the feels, but this is also about stabilizing in our emotions. We're building a new emotional foundation, especially seeing how we were just reborn, resurrected, renewed, through that eclipse portal. That was the rebirth in case you missed it. That's why we're all exhausted. We just gave birth to this new identity, to this new chapter, to this new realm, to this new reality. And that's why we're all struggling right now because we just damn near exhausted ourselves in that birthing process. We'll talk about that in just a second. The first quarter moon in Cancer energy definitely going to set the tone on what it is that we wanna build, what it is that we wanna create, what we have to do to nurture and nourish ourselves back to a place of safety, of security, of stability, first and foremost within ourselves, secondly, within our relationship dynamics, thirdly, as a collective. There's a lot of change going on. We definitely need to find a new common ground. This week, we will be finishing up Aries season. We shift into Taurus season beginning on the 19th. Heads up, there is going to be a Taurus season e-guide available for download over the next coming of days. Now, Taurus season is an earth energy, a fixed earth energy at that. That is when we are going to see a lot of the ideas, a lot of the inspiration, a lot of these aha moments, these epiphanies that came at us through Aries season actually come into form. Taurus season is when we slow things down, when we become a little bit more present, when we get in touch with our physical body, with the physical realm and environment around us, and we recognize what we need to build, what we need to create, what we need to bring to life based off of the aha moments, the epiphanies, the little glimmers and shimmers of hope that were dangled at us through Aries season. But the banger of the energy is coming just a day into that Taurus season with the major astrology that I talked about in the 2024 year ahead reading. And this is between Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, 
and Uranus, the great awakener who likes to shake things up, disrupt the norm, if you will. Both of them are in Taurus energy. We have been in a loose aspect of this particular conjunction for the last couple of weeks. I talked about it um, and we kind of unpacked what that meant, especially with that energy building under that new moon total eclipse in Aries energy. But we are going to be gaining momentum to this very profound shakeup and wake up. We'll talk about some of the things that I would suspect will pop off under that particular energy briefly here in just a second. And I will likely be doing a rant about it, an astro class about it over on my Patreon over this next coming of week. So what I would like to also just point out to you is that we have two very, 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 very busy days coming at us this week. I want you to mark your ca your calendar because Wednesday is going to be a major day of craziness, of chaos. And then followed by Friday. Friday is going to be a pretty busy day in the in the cosmos as well and a very interesting dynamic to kind of consider that Wednesdays are ruled over by Mercury Fridays are ruled over by Venus and on Friday we actually have Mercury and Venus coming together in a conjunction just before the Sun shifts into Taurus season so that's going to be a very interesting dynamic to look out for the other days of the week are semi calm semi slow if you will because again we're just trying to gain our bearings we're trying to gain our footing so to speak but wednesday and friday are going to be major crazy chaotic kind of days where we really have to prepare and again if you're into scheduling you know your day your week around some of the astrology aspects i would say be very kind to yourself on wednesday and on friday do not fill your plate up very very full because it's going to be a crazy chaotic kind a day. Anywho, thought I would just mention that. Now, before we jump into some of the ascension symptoms that I want to talk about for this week, I just want to take a moment to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below. My YouTube channel has taken yet another hit, literally by 50%. And I kind of made a connection there. Um, I'm not sure if, if any of y'all in YouTube land are also creators. I would love to hear your feedback on this. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, um, as a YouTube creator, sometimes YouTube sends you these like, you know, surveys to fill out or questionnaires to fill out just to kind of gauge, you know, where the creator program is at, what they could do better, yada, yada, yada. Well, it is supposed to be completely confidential. It's not supposed to be connected to your account at all. It's supposed to be totally anonymous, so they say. And I ripped them a new asshole. I will not even lie. I, I've gone into depth about how I think that they are strategically censoring my my account and how they are preventing my for my subscribers from even you know receiving notifications for the content that I put out I really did not hold back and since that point and this just dawned on me over the last couple of days because my YouTube channel is suffering so badly taking such a bad hit literally by 50% I'll give you a good idea normally I used to have like a thousand to twelve hundred views especially on these ascension forecast videos and on my nor normal daily energy forecast videos they were around like 800 views per video and now I'm lucky to get 400 and my content hasn't changed. I don't think our community has changed. I really do not believe that, you know, I've gone from gaining 100 subscribers a month to 20 in a natural and organic kind of way. I definitely feel like the algorithm has definitely shifted. And it just dawned on me that maybe filling out that, you know, anonymous creator type of survey in the way that I did actually had a major impact on my channel. So again, for those content creators out there listening in YouTube land, have you filled out those surveys? And if you have, and if you were truthful, and if you did rip YouTube a new asshole, did you watch your channel suffer because of it? I will get down to the nitty and gritty of what happened here to my channel because it is very, very defeating. As you know, I haven't had the best of luck with YouTube over these last couple of years. 
and now I feel like I'm being punished yet again. So that's why I take this time to thank you because those likes and those comments and those emojis and you sharing, it really does help. And it's really honestly probably the only thing keeping my channel alive at this point. And so I don't know how else to express my gratitude to all of you who take the time to engage with myself, with my channel, with each other in the way that you do. It is super, super important. So thank you very much for that. I also want to thank those of you that have jumped over to my Patreon, tried it out as a free member. Many of you, of course, have upgraded to a paid subscriber to access all of the paid content. But we also want to just thank those of you that have continued to be a VIP over on Patreon. Um, I also want to thank those of you that have given me some feedback on the new moon guide delivery. Um, let me just say this. Yes, we are out of the, you know, the moon energy, because usually we like to do the moon guides and those activities like two, three days prior of that event and maybe even two, three days after. So, you know, technically speaking, we're out of that particular vibe. However, the eclipse portal that we just came out of is so important in the greater grander scheme of things and will be a continuing story taking us into the fall and then also taking us into the very beginning stages of 2025, that if you haven't kind of taken part, you haven't downloaded that moon guide, you haven't sat through those particular moon guide courses, I'm going to really recommend you do so, so much so that I'm offering you a discount code. Go to my website uh, and get the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra that moon guide and the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries energy that we just had that moon guide and enter eclipse 2024 at the checkout use that coupon code get it 50 percent off i think it's very 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 extremely very important that you understand the energy shift the birthing process that we just went through the new initiation chapter that we're just entering into do the work please like get yourself in alignment with those energies get yourself in full understanding and comprehension of what just happened and what we're currently moving through because again the storyline continues into the fall and into 2025. So I would really recommend that you do the work now and that you get yourself situated and that you understand what it is now that we're going to be building, we're going to be creating based off of what just happened. So again, please use Eclipse 2024 in order to get those particular moon guide videos 50% off. I also mentioned already, but I'm going to do another shameless plug, uh, the Taurus season e-guide will be available over the next coming of days for your downloading pleasure. And again, just a reminder, I make the e-guides according to the Zodiac season with a rundown on all the energetic events that are going to be taking place. There are journal prompts there. There are activities in order to locate it in your birth chart. This is for you to walk through the month. So that when we have an event, let's say, you know, the big events that are coming at us towards the end of April, specifically what I'm talking about is Venus and Mars. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, please go ahead, listen to the April energy forecast to understand a little bit better. It's a major green flag event for us. You can also be downloading your Zodiac forecast. Either way, the whole point of the tools in which I try to create is that you have these e-guides for these zodiac seasons to kind of walk through the astro events as they come about. And of course, if you want to do a deep dive into the major moon events that take place in each zodiac season, that's what the moon guides are for. And so either way, there are guiding tools, there are assistant tools out there and resources for you to kind of rely upon to get in alignment, to stay in alignment with these energies as they are shifting. So again, look out for the Taurus season e-guide. Again, you can download that individually on my website, or you can jump over, be a Patreon member and gain access to all of my content. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the ascension symptoms, the ascension energy. Let's back up for a second. So like I previously mentioned, uh, that eclipse, I don't know, semi underwhelming, I would say. Um, I'm in the area where it was a 98% uh, totality. I wasn't driving the hour to see it. I didn't even go outdoors. I don't believe in exposing yourself to the eclipse energies. 
Um, point being, our ancestors didn't, so why are we? Uh, secondly to that is become a very capitalistic event. Take a good look at how much people were paying for, um, let's say, hotel rooms in areas that they were trying to make these, you know, eclipse events happen. Look at the money being made off of these glasses that, of course, we're going to protect your eyeballs from being burnt out. Even though I remember very, very clearly as a kid staring at the eclipse with my naked eyeballs and I'm, I see fine. Um, but it was very underwhelming. First of all, I did not expose myself nor my dogs to it. Um, again, wasn't trying to push right or wrong or my own belief systems on anybody, but we did talk about it a little bit over on my Patreon, what everybody was choosing to do. I'm very surprised, to be honest with you, with the amount of people in the spiritual community that went full out traveled across you know provinces countries states whatever the case may be to stand in a group of a bunch of people that are not semi-awakened even in the smallest for an energetic event that was supposed to be in meant to kind of be activated in solitude because that's what aries energy is all about it also very much surprised me that you know as many people congregated out underneath the sky as they did with obvious chemtrails like literally being sprayed on top of them there is no surprise to me that everybody is suffering from some sort of sniffle some sort of cold some sort of flu look at how many people were out underneath that poison sky observing an event that they had no business observing okay so let me just start there the cold, the flu, the sniffles, the allergy activation. Okay, you can call it what you want to call it. Maybe you did catch a cold. Maybe you did catch a little bit of a flu. Maybe you do have allergies popping off. Or maybe it's the absolute poor air quality that you all went out and sat under and breathed in very deeply while you were, again, eyeballs to the sky. We will never know, but I find it very coincidental, even though I don't believe in coincidences, that there are so many people that fell sick after this eclipse energy and still are not feeling very well. So, you know, are we going to blame it on the energies? Are we going to blame it on the poison in the sky? Are we going to blame it on putting yourself in situations and circumstances to pick up on other people's nasty ass unstabilized energy when you were in a situation that technically speaking, your vibration, your frequency didn't need to be a part of? Again, a topic for another day. There is nonetheless a lot of cold, flu, allergy, not feeling good, achiness, exhaustion going on. Now, you know, again, are we going to label that as an energetic symptom? Are we going to and that that there's mercury retrograde? Um, are we going to be labeling that as some sort of, you know, biological symptom? I would say a little bit of column A or column B. Um, because I just blap blapped and had that Mercury retrograde uh, mishap, I do want to talk about the fact that the dizziness, the disorientation, the I want to call it euphoria sensation that many of us have been experiencing since that eclipse event. Again, is it energetic? Is it, you know, cold and flu related? Is it chemtrail related? We will never know. But there's a lot of pressure on that headspace. There's a lot of pressure kind of on our physical bodies right now. I know Mercury's retrograde has been a violent one here in this Aries energy. Um, I have just been kind of tongue tied, I would say, which makes it a very difficult thing to do when the majority of your job relates around communication. It's been very hard to get the words out of my brain, out of my mouth, out of my head in the correct fashion in which I wish to actually express them. I find it's very hard to stay concentrated on what it is that I'm trying to do. Um, the zoning out part of this Mercury retrograde has been very intense. Uh, I don't even know what I'm thinking about when I zone out and start staring at a wall, but I know it's pretty profound. I know there are probably downloads that are trying to piece together that I don't quite understand as of right now, but I could be in mid sentence and then all of a sudden just, you know, dazed and confused, staring at a wall for no good reason. And I 100% blame Mercury retrograde for that particular energy, for that uh, confusion, for that dizziness, for that spacing, zoning out. Now, 
another thing that I, I'm going to try to relate to what I just said, like the euphoric type of energy where nothing seems real type of thing. I don't know about y'all, but everything looks fake as F to me. Like even in my own house, it feels like it's like a, I don't know, like a movie set. Like I'm literally on the Truman Show. Like everything just looks different. And I know that you know, the eclipse that we just went through, the resurrection, the renewal of, you know, new vibration, new frequency, new identity, new version of self is putting our, let's call it central nervous system and sensory system into overdrive. I know that colors are, are not quite coloring the way that they normally color. I know that scents don't smell the way that they used to be smelling. Everything's off just a tad. And Speaking of off, like time and space are off. We know that there's been a time warp. I think all of us have been very aware of time fluctuating, but distance, space is off as well. I had a client reach out and be like, yeah, did you notice like everything's off about six inches? Yes, I 100% did. It's interesting because our physical form, our cellular memory has a good idea on, you know, the, the whole space and distance thing like you can walk around your house and pretty much with your eyes closed and you know if you have a good sense of awareness your physical body knows where the distance to you know your glass cupboard is in relation to your sink or you know you're standing at your fridge you need to go for a utensil you know where that is it happens so often that we don't even realize how automatic it actually is so when you go to reach for something and you're off by six inches or whatever the case may be, is there a real good, good probability that the actual matrix dimensions have changed and not actual space and time itself? Meaning your physical body knows what's real, knows what's right, knows what's comfortable, knows what's familiar. And if our bodies are still doing the same thing and going for the same drawer and, you know, the handle is just way off, then, yeah, we have to assume that the new vibrations, the new frequencies that just got birthed under that eclipse portal, there has been some sort of manipulation to that overall matrix grid. Now, I want to know in your own life, do you realize or did you notice that dimensions are off? Um, do you notice that maybe your body is feeling a little bit heavier and therefore gravity is off? Are, are you having the dropsies, if you will? Um, are you going for a handle and off by six inches? Like just what what brought this to your attention? I would love to know when you actually have that aha moment that something is off. Would love to know about that. The thing about it is, is that we're in a very interesting state of being right now. Again, I, I just want to describe it. Let me go back even further. So we are in this Aries and Libra and axis of the North and South Node. This is where the karmic lessons come from. This is where the eclipse energy come from. But we just officially ended the death part of the rebirth cycle. So of course, in order to be reborn, there has to be some sort of death ending and closure take place before there is a re resurrection and renewal or rebirth of any kind. The Taurus and Scorpio axis that we were on for the year and a half prior to actually shifting into this Aries and Libra and axis, July of 2023, we actually just completed the death part of that Taurus and Scorpio axis through this particular portal. And so the endings, the closures, the death portion of this, let's call it rebirth energy has finally come to a close. But if you consider the fact that we were literally giving birth, we were dying and yet being reborn through this eclipse portal. Well, I don't know about too many mamas out there, but I don't I don't think too many mamas after pushing a child out of them get up and want to run a marathon or have a new sense of energy or feel, you know, physically strong and empowered and competent. Um, I don't know if you know, but like giving birth is is literally like the biggest marathon that you will ever run, the hardest workout that you will ever have. And we all just went through that. So this is why we're exhausted. This is why we're feeling just not ourselves. We have this 
new little being that we can't really understand at the moment and the new being being us mind you hint hint nudge nudge we don't know what to do with it it's not comfortable it's not familiar we're exhausted we're we're over overwhelmed we're overstimulated there's still things spasming in our bodies we have growing pains we're super super hungry we have all of these cravings and then just as we start to eat we start feeling nauseous our hormones are all over the place our emotions are fluctuating our ideas the mental plane narrative goes from positive and hopeful and optimistic to the future to being scared to death on what we're going to do next there's this impending doom waiting for the ball to drop what's next many of us feel like there is something new right around the corner and i would say that that is jupiter and uranus uh, this is a major major event guys like super super intense and i would say um you know to take it on a couple of different levels here um, first of all, I would say that collectively speaking, we are going to see a major leap forward. You know, that Uranian energy is the awakening. Um, the Jupiter energy is, you know, life lessons and wisdom that's now being integrated, that now we're going to move forward and create options and opportunities with. But there has to be a, a sudden change, a sudden disruption to the old. There has to be an epiphany. There has to be a jolt, if you will. And I would say that speaking from the conscious realm we're going to see a major level up major energy fluctuations um with that jupiter uranus conjunction now when we're talking about like the physical earth like look out for wild energy patterns that are going to affect weather uh we're talking earthquakes now we just had those little earthquakes in some not so familiar areas around that eclipse energy um, I'm not even going to talk about what I think that actually was because again, my YouTube channel is already in dire, dire states of dying and I cannot afford another flag. But considering the part of the world in which those particular earthquakes or earth tremblings took place and considering, you know, some of the things that we know that go on underneath the surface of the earth, uh, do we 100% believe that it was an earthquake? I don't know. I don't know. Um, some would say, well, you know, it could be CERN because CERN fired up around the 8th. Well, you know, CERN's in Switzerland and they didn't have an eclipse in Switzerland. So that's really reaching to make that connection. However, uh, we know that when you throw a lot more electrical charge out into the atmosphere than there needs to be, that, of course, there's going to be re repercussions over that. But the timeline doesn't add up is what I'm getting at. But the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction, think of lightning bolts with Uranus. And of course, Uranus is in Taurus energy, which is literally Mother Earth herself. I would say lightning storms. I would say earthquakes. I would say random like sinkhole events. I would say that's just you know on earth's surface i would say that there's probably going to be news of some kind of shift or discovery in the tectonic plates moving like we're talking major alterations to the physical form of the earth but even more than that taurus energy is agriculture it's money it's finances pay attention to the stock market around the 20th there's going to be major major moves major disruption let's say um, and with all of the wackadoodle events that have been popping off in 2024 already, we shouldn't be surprised by a lot of the things that are going to be coming at us with that particular astrology shift. But just pay attention to what is going on around you. Pay attention to your physical body. You're going to get hints and clues long before you're ever going to actually realize the reverberatory effect, the resonating effect that happens here on the collective earth plane. You're going to feel it. Many of us are dreaming about it already, thinking about dreams and sleep, how wackadoodle our dream and sleep state was through that eclipse portal. Um, I don't know. Many people are, are reporting different things about their sleep state and their dream state, especially through this eclipse energy. And what I've been noticing is it has a lot to do with sun sign energy as well. Um, it really feels like I would say, well, fire energies for sure are just scatterbrained all over the place because, of course, Aries energy is a fire sign. 
I would say that the air energies, because of this Aries and Libra and access, they're having quite a time with their sleep state, scattered brain, scattered sleep. I would say a lot of anxiety, a lot of temperature fluctuations going on with the fire and air signs. However, the earth and water signs, I feel, are moving into a deep sleep, just not for long enough. And then being awoken or aroused for whatever reason, having a hard time going back in it. Um, it just feels like we're overly tired. We're overly exhausted. It does feel like more of the water signs and earth signs are having more complaints of the cold of the flu type of energies. And again, whether they're ascension symptoms or just repercussions from the energies that we just moved through, or again, some kind of man-made alter alterations in order to, you know, just change that air quality on us. We will never know, but you can pay attention. You can kind of connect the dots. You can see the patterns emerging when you start talking about it and just realize the common complaints and kind of connect it to um, the, the sun sign and what elemental energy sun signs are being affected the most. I would suspect that this up and down energy is going to continue until we walk our asses into this Taurus season. And when we do, it's going to feel like we hit a brick wall and it's going to feel like we're 500 pounds trying to run underwater, if you will, for the first part. And again, we have that full moon in Scorpio taking place that will kind of provide a closed door on this eclipse energy. But officially, we will not see the official ending of this eclipse energy until that new moon in Taurus. And that carries us into May and heads up. Pluto retrogrades in May as well. So again, a lot of energy shifts coming at us and the up and down energy is needed in order for us to find a comfortable new middle ground. So we do have to expect that the up and down not only taking place in the energy, but also going to affect our mood, our attitude, our thoughts, our feelings in major, major ways. So I kind of mentioned this um, you know, giving you the whole giving birth analogy, but our hunger is changing. And considering the fact that we just gave birth, con considering the fact that we're just like exhausted, we don't even know what we want. We need to nourish our bodies. We need to nourish our mind, our body, our soul. And a lot of those realizations on where it is that we got to get our shit together and start taking better care of ourselves will emerge under that first quarter moon in cancer energy popping off here on the 15th. That's going to be a humdinger to realize where it is that we've kind of abandoned ourselves in a lot of ways, where it is that we have to get back on the bandwagon and really start kind of taking care of that mind, body, soul equation. So yeah, the cravings, the hunger, we're definitely all over the place. Again, you know, cravings just aren't being quenched in the way that we thought that they would. Um, just when we feel like we are eating the right kind of things for our body, suddenly we're becoming very nauseous. Um, it's a hard go to really figure out what it is that we should be eating that is agreeable and enjoyable and we can actually finish at this particular point in time. Now to connect it with some bathroom issues, of course, there's been a whole fluctuation of our bodily systems with this resurrection, this renewal, this rebirth of new self. We're still not quite familiar with the comings and goings, literally. Um, but again, we are kind of realizing where it is that some of the old crap, literally, is being trapped in us. And that's because, again, the fragmented part of self still very attached to the old, to the past, to all of these things. It manifests, literally speaking, and we hold on to that crap. Uh, that's constipation 101. And so we have to, again, keep the fluids to us because, again, we're in a fire season. Many of us thirsty as hell, uh, not only in our physical forms, but thirsty for clarity, for knowledge, for action, for progress moving forward as well. Um, but that fluid intake really needs to stay up to really help our, let's call it exit systems, work at optimal capacity at this particular point in time. Um, I also want to talk about the fact like a lot is shifting. There's a lot of division, uh, not only taking place within our own selves, but within the collective as well. And I think that now, and especially moving forward, you're going to, not that it wasn't apparent before, like the division between the collective, definitely apparent. But here's the thing. We just came out of this eclipse portal, and this was the telltale sign of who's going to stay and who's going to go. 
And so as we move forward, it's going to become very, very clear, very evident who is holding on to the past for dear life and who is opening up their arms to anything but the past. And this is going to create some tension and conflict in relationship dynamics. And of course, relationship dynamics are the number one topic and theme with this Aries and Libra and axis, uh, with this eclipse energy that we just went through. But even on an individual basis, we're feeling the divide within ourselves. We're feeling those old parts of self hold on desperately to what once was. We're feeling the new parts of self kind of curious to see what could be. But the back and forth, the conflict, constant inner dialogue of realizing, nope, that's the old version of self. Let's rewrite that into something better, something confident, something a little bit more optimistic. It's a full-time job as of right now. And so as we continue to move forward, the division amongst the collective, amongst humanity, amongst, you know, our individual lives, where the people in our lives are concerned and within ourselves, it's going to become more and more evident. Which means that if you're of a vibration and frequency that wants to, you know, very happily move away from the past, move away from what once was and really embody and embrace this new version of self and all the possibilities that come along with it, you're really going to need to be your best, strongest self in your mental plane and in your heart space in the days moving forward, because you're going to constantly need to nip that old ass, negative ass narrative in the bud and rewrite it with a more, I'm gonna say aligned narrative that supports and encourages the growth, the change, the transformation that this new version of self wants us to lean all the way into. And so that's going to become very, very apparent. Now, the last couple of weeks, I think I mentioned how looking in the mirror, our version of self, our image is changing. And, you know, it could be your eye color, it could be blemishes, it could be, you know, just whatever. There are just very fine details that we're shifting, that we're changing, that had us seeing ourselves from a different set of eyes. Well, this week, first of all, I think there's going to be major breakouts in our skin, major blemishes coming to the surface. Again, we have a new image, a new identity, and therefore there are repressed energies and emotions that need to come to the surface for a release. And that's what gives us our, you know, breakouts, our blemishes, our rashes, whatever the case may be. Um, but I also just want you to continue to focus on your eyes. I want you to focus on how your looks are changing. We're essentially shapeshifters at this particular point in time because the vibrations and frequencies are so different because the recalibration, the realignment that our physical and energetic bodies are going through are so intense because of this rebirthing process. We are still kind of watching our image change. And again, I'm going to go back to giving birth to a baby. You know, you're just in awe of this little baby that came out of you. And you look at this baby and each time that you look at the baby, the, the baby's image is changing. You notice like, oh, does it look more like me or more like my partner? Does it more, you know, does the baby now have, you know, blue in their eyes or is it brown eyes? Look at their hair. Like each day, each moment seems like the baby is actually changing. Well, we are the babies, my friend. OK, we are a bunch of babies being reborn in this new creative life force energy. And because of that, our image, our identity is changing. And therefore, the way that we see ourselves and the way that we're being kind of perceived out in the world is changing as well. You may not have changed your hair color, but somebody's going to comment. Oh, my goodness, your hair looks nice. Did you just color your hair? You're not going to have gone through an eyeball color change, but people are going to say, oh, I've never noticed that you have green or gold in your eyes. Um, people are going to say, oh, I didn't notice that you had freckles. You know, didn't know that you wore glasses. Didn't know that you had that birthmark. Didn't see that tattoo. Didn't see the glow. You know, there's going to be all kinds of different observations, whether coming from the outside world to you being brought to your attention or whether you are just observing this within yourself. Times are changing. Physical bodies are changing. Frequency energies are changing and therefore image is changing as well. And that's why we feel so freaking uncomfortable because this is a brand new us, a brand new world, a brand new situation, circumstance and environment. So one would say, well, 
okay, we just entered into a new world. We just entered into a new realm. We just entered into a new identity. Why do I have a lack of energy, a lack of passion, a lack of desire, a lack of Fs to give? Well, I don't know, but like we just gave birth. So did you expect to be all full of piss and vinegar to go ahead and, you know, build an empire the day after you just allowed a being to be born through the portal of your creation? I don't know. I don't know. I think we're being awfully hard on ourselves. I think that expectations for these energetic shifts are set so high that there's a certain level of disappointment that follows when there is a major isn't a major shift overnight. I think that people have a false sense of expectations on what some of these energy shifts are supposed to do. And so again, and I know that I, I repeat myself often, but I feel the need to on some particular topics and themes, just because we have an energy aspect that pops off does not mean that the energetic events that they trigger follow in that exact same time frame. And for example, eclipse energies take up to six months to truly manifest, to truly be actualized, truly be materialized, to truly understand what actually happened through this eclipse portal. And so I feel like and again, you know, we can blame the, the spiritual hype community or we can, you know, you can blame whatever it is you, you want to blame. But at the same time, there is a lot of hype that is, you know, falsely given to a lot of these energetic events that I think have people under some kind of tainted perception that everything is supposed to pop off on that one day. And if nothing happens, then, you know, you weren't in alignment or it wasn't going to happen for you couldn't be further from the truth. And so what I would say is, is I think that we expect to have this clarity on what we're now passionate about. We expect for there to be this new passion, new desire for us to pursue. I think we expect to be refilled or renewed in our physical energy and our bucket of Fs to give. And when we're not, we think that there's something wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with us. We just went through an absolute banger of in an astro energetic eclipse event that we haven't even seen the repercussions of as of yet. I'm very serious when I say that we are building, you know, you'll, if you listen to my daily energy forecast, you will always hear me be saying as of late that we are building in the inspiration, in the motivation, in the passion, in the desire, in the energy needed in order to actually see our long-term goals come into fruition, especially with Mars currently in this Pisces energy. This is about getting in alignment with a new mission, a new quest, a new purpose. Do we know what it is yet? Many of us do not. Do we know what we have to do, what we have to pursue? Many of us do not. Do many of us actually think that we're a lost cause and we're confused because we don't align with the energies? I would say, yeah, there's a false expectation there. And if we don't align with a lot of the things, you know, energetically speaking, that I know I talk about, we think that we missed the boat. We think that we're behind. We think that we're missing something. We miss, we miss, we miss the opportunity to jump timelines. We miss this. We miss that. That's why paying attention to these ascension symptoms, as repetitive as they may be from week to week sometimes, those these are the small clues, the small hints, the small clues, the small little pieces of proof and evidence in the run of our day that something happened. We may not know what yet. We may not have a good understanding of the full picture of the, of the you know, outcome that is going to happen from these energetic events. But the small changes in our physical energy, in our physical bodies, in our circumstances, in the way that we see, in the way that we think, in the way that we feel, in the way that we just are going about our day, these ascension symptoms are the small little indicators on the day to day basis that we need to remind ourselves that big things are happening. It's just in our egoic perception of being a human being thinking that everything has to be happy go lucky exciting inspiring all the time. We tend to think that we missed the boat and we did not. And so if you're feeling like you know, everybody else knows what they're doing 
First of all, get off social media because that is the biggest farce that you could possibly believe right now is that everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody got their shit together. Nobody knows what the F is going on. Let's be very clear. And anybody that claims that they do is full of bullshit. I'm going to call it out right there. There are certain energies that you can give an explanation for and you can, you know, sit back and formulate and predict how you could see those energies manifest. But like nobody knows the full broad spectrum and picture of what just happened. And we won't know until the ball gets rolling. So if you find yourself in a lack of passion and desire and have to give, please understand that you're not alone, that this is part of the process and that it's not going to stay like this forever, that there is going to be epiphanies pop off, especially as we get closer to this Jupiter and Uranus conjunction, where we're just going to be, you know, catapulted into a, do, a, a new situation, circumstance and scenario that we can't even predict as of now. And then, you know, long, long term spectrum here, as I've been talking about, the end of April is the green light go ahead. Um, April being the jam packed crazy month in which it has been already and will continue to be until the last final moments of April is preparing us for a wackadoodle, crazy, chaotic May. And these two months are preparing us for a climactic point in this story that will be popping off in the fall in eclipse season. And that's why I've put out the 2024 year ahead reading at the very beginning of the year. I'm hoping that everybody is going back and taking a listen just to stay in alignment because we cover the major astrology events in that particular forecast. And so if you want a good idea on where all of this energy is building to, sit down and listen to the 2024 year ahead reading and you'll have a lot better, bigger, broader perspective and understanding of where these smaller changes and transformations on a day-to-day basis are going to add up to the great big grand whole picture of what it is that we're going to end up in. So I want to talk about this new chapter for a second. So again, I kind of talked about, you know, the division becoming a little bit more clear. And I kind of talked about, you know, like our image kind of shifting and our identity shifting. Let's talk about the actor switch out. And what I mean by that is that if you understand that you are the starring role of the movie that is you and that every single person that you have in your life is a supporting role to you as the main actor, then they are all actors too. And what we just went through is not only gonna highlight the division amongst the people, but it kickstarted the actor switch out, the new actor switch out, I call it. And so you may have people that have been in your life for a very, very, very long, long time that suddenly, like, you're just not on the same page with, you just have nothing in common with, you just don't feel that connection, that bond with, that's okay. It's time for new actors to enter into your realm, which means that the starring role actors that have been supporting your starring role, they need to step off, right? Like, if you think of a soap opera, they're constantly bringing new actors in. Normally, when the old actors die off, we need some spice, right? We need to, we need to bring some drama, to the scene and so we do have to kill off actors and we do need to bring new actors on we over the next couple of weeks are especially going to be realizing the actors that are now being switched out so again people that have been a part of your life for many many moons they will be dropping off they will be going on their own quest their own adventure probably not going to be making any kind of starring appearances starring roles in the movie that is you for a very long time if ever there are some actor roles that are permanently being retired right now because of this eclipse energy. And again, there are new people about to enter in that bring new storylines, bring new lessons, bring new chapters, bring new tests, if you will. And especially we have this Jupiter and Uranus conjunction, which is a shake up and a wake up like you just won't even understand until it comes to pass. And then we move into the end of April where Venus and Mars move into their respective rulerships. That's definitely going to have a major impact on relationship dynamics. But I would suspect that that is the point in time where we're going to see a lot of these actors switch out roles. You may be seeing it now. I know in my own life, you know, friendships aren't what they meant to be, what they used to be, what I what I wanted them to be. Um, You know, family dynamics are changing as well. 
Um, the want, need, and desire for new people to enter into your world is kind of being heightened in a potent kind of way. There's a, a recasting of the actor role going on in life right now. And if you were to focus on that and pay a little bit more attention to that, you would you will probably be able to process the emotions that go along with that actor switch out a little bit better. What do I mean by that? Well, there's a lot of people that, you know, let's take it, let's take it from a, a serious relationship, like a romantic relationship perspective first. Some people get in relationship dynamics and love each other so much that they could never, ever envision a time and a place and environment where they could ever go their separate ways. And then just one day you just realize, ah, oh, don't feel the same way anymore. We got nothing in common. We're not even on the same path. So at one point in time, the connection, the intimacy, the merging of souls were so strong that you could never envision a life without them being just that. And then all of a sudden, because of vibrations and frequencies and soul contracts being renewed and in some cases written off and, or, and in some cases being initiated, you just you, you wake up one day and realize that you're not even in love with this perfect stranger anymore. Let's take it to a friendship level. There are some friendships that come and go. Let me just say that to have to, to have the same people, family, friends, or romantic partners in your life for an extended period of time, first of all, you're blessed. Second of all, that is a very strong soul contract. I truly believe that there should be constant movement with the with the supporting actor roles in your life in order for you to be evolving. How can you evolve if the people in your world never change or challenge you? And so a lot of people would perceive these friendships ending as sad or these relationship dynamics ending as sad or family members, you know, being distanced, detached, or in some cases decease and leave this world altogether as sad. Um, I see it as a celebration of a soul contract being finalized. I see it as a graduation point. I see it as a welcome shift in the storyline. And I think that if you get on that particular train of thought and you have that perspective, you can kind of move through the, I'm going to say emotions that come along with those changes a lot more efficiently, a lot more gracefully. So yeah, I just feel like the new actor switch out is definitely going to be a thing. Now, now that we're in this observation mode, I also want you to pay attention to repeating patterns and behaviors. Now, here's the thing. You could have someone, let's say a friend, drop off out of your life and you can have this new person enter your life and be like, oh, OK, this is like, you know, old friend 2.0. But then all of a sudden you realize that the new friend is pretty much your old friend, just in a different form. And so you have to ask yourself, OK, so I obviously got too comfortable, too familiar with the old friend and wasn't able to see the lessons in which their particular presence was here to teach me. So they sent in another fresh person, fresh personality. But I'm starting to see that that is the exact same, let's call it identity, personality that my old friend was just in a different body, a different form. So then you have to ask yourself, OK, so what lesson did I fail to learn from the old person that they had to send a new person in with a fresh sense, a fresh sense of of let's call it personality, wants, needs, desires, connection, you know, getting to know someone again. And you realize, huh, they're they're awfully, awfully familiar. Like, I know I just met them, but I feel like I've met them forever. Well, technically, you have you met you met them already. The vibration, the frequency, the the actual entity in the old friend that just left your realm because again, you weren't learning the lesson. So here we have new people coming in and they might look new, they might feel new, but then as you start to get to know them, you realize, huh, this is, this is very familiar. You're, you're almost like a carbon copy of my ex best friend. Okay. So if we're open to observing the patterns and behaviors and recognizing these particular quote unquote coincidences, then this is going to be a beneficial observation for you to start working with, to start unpacking what your next chapter in lessons are actually going to be. So again, it comes back to paying attention to who is exiting versus who is entering and then paying attention to, especially the new people that are entering. Do they remind you 
of anyone, especially that just previously exited your old life? And if the answer is yes, then what are the commonalities? What did you fail to learn? What could you be doing better? Where could you right the wrongs of the old friendship in this new friendship? There is a point of growth and evolution, but we also have to be aware of the patterns and behaviors because obviously we didn't learn it the first time around and we're all here to learn. We're all here to evolve. So you have to have that particular, I'm gonna say perspective to be aware enough to identify the patterns and behaviors, especially with new people coming in in order to actually grow to evolve to learn the freaking lesson. So pay attention to that. Um, What else is on my list? So the lower back is going to continue to be a little bit, I'm going to say uncomfortable, uh, mostly because, again, there's a lot of tension going on in our bells, which I talked about holding on to that old crap. Secondly, this new identity requires a new egoic programming to be rewritten, which we're doing, whether you realize that we're doing it or not. And the old survival egoic programming is stored in the root chakra, which is the lower back. So there is a lot of rigidity, a lot of pain. You might have sciatic pain kicking up. You may feel like you need to crack your back. You may need to, you know, just get into yoga again, maybe dance it out. That lower back is definitely going to give us a literal pain in the ass because, again, a good indicator that we're overriding some of the old survival egoic programming, which is a really, really great sign. I want to talk about the feet for a second. So the, the connection to the earth has changed. The vibration, the frequency of the earth has changed. The vibration and frequency of us as individuals and as the collective has changed. So the reconnection that we're now going through to connect back and find a comfortable connection in the vibration and frequency where we're meeting earth and earth is meeting us. Of course, that's going to have a major effect on our feet. Now, you may have cold feet because, again, we're kind of anticipating making some moves here, but we're a little bit nervous because we don't know the path, the plan, the strategy yet. And that can definitely put us in a very apprehensive, anxious point of view. Uh, we may have cold feet, but we also have sweaty feet. OK, and we also have sweaty palms. So there's a lot of um, purging, like sweat is release. Sweat is purging. We have to get this out of our bodies uh, I would say prior to entering into that Taurus energy. And so once we kind of hit that Taurus energy, um, things are definitely going to change for us in a lot of ways, but we're going to become a little bit more, how do I say it, present in our physical form. We're going to reconnect to the five senses. That's why we're going through this extra overwhelming sensory input stimulation thing now, like why the colors are coloring in a different way and why the smells are smelling in a different way and the tastes are tasting in a different way and touches are touching in a different way. All of this realignment, this recalibration is going to be solidified, is going to be that hard reset where we connect to the five senses, we connect to the physical form in a real, real way when we move into that Taurus energy. And it may come as a little bit of a, like I said, a sensation of hitting a brick wall. It slows down time, slows down our senses. We become a little bit more present. Doesn't necessarily feel that great to be in our present bodies going through all of these uncomfortable changes. So we have to prepare for that. But this week is basically like the the final testing stage, you know? So if we were rebuilding an engine in a car um, and we had it up, you know, we had we had the hood open and we were testing all of the things. We're testing the spark plugs. We're testing the engine. We're testing to make sure that the tires are on. This is like the final inspection phase, if you will, before we lower that car and give it the green light, go ahead to leave the garage and hit the road running. And so there's going to be some bumps and aches and some tweaks and some twitches throughout the course of this week, preparing us for that, I'm going to say, green light, go ahead that we are going to get in some kind of capacity when we move into Taurus season. Um, the last thing that I feel like I want to talk about, because I feel like it's an interesting sensation, but I probably should have talked about it when I was talking about the cold, the flu, the allergy sensation. Uh, so my bad, forgive me. Um, but the burning and the tingling going on with our lips. And uh, I would say the puffiness of our lips. Now, Mercury is retrograde in Aries energy. We're holding a lot of fire in our mouths, in our throat chakras um, and in our headspace. But we're talking about the mouth right now. 
And so I feel like the reason why we're kind of getting these burning lips and this like tingling, burning sensation in our mouths is because the energy is percolating for a form of expression. Like we have a lot to say, believe it or not. We can't articulate it right now. We don't even know what we want to say, but you best believe it's going to come out verbal vomit style free form um, once Mercury actually goes direct. But right now there's a building of this energy. There's an intensity building of this energy of this verbal vomit making its way up to our lip point where we can actually express it and get it out but it's not there yet so all of this energy is just kind of being held in and of course you know you could be biting your tongue like literally right not meaning to but literally um you could have uh jaw tension you could have toothaches you could have um maybe you burnt your mouth on food uh, maybe you burnt the roof of your mouth on food. Either way, there's some sort of, you know, dryness taking over that lip space, that fire energy in that lip space, the burning, the tingling of the lips. There's definitely something that we have to get out of our body, get off of our chest. Whether we know it right now or not remains to be seen. We will 100% know it towards the end of the month. Once Mercury goes direct, we will be able to get it off of our chest and out of our bodies and out of our mouth. And that will be great, but right now it's just sitting there. It's just percolating and it definitely can lead to some tingling sensations, some burning sensations, and just feeling overly uncomfortable in that mouth and in that lip area. Okay, guys, that was the final thing off of my list. So I thank you very much for being here, for sitting with me, for listening to it. I thank you so much for being here live in the chat. If you're joining us Friday evening, if you're not, I thank you for catching the replay. Again, I'm going to really invite and encourage you to drop an emoji in the comment section. I thank you so much for doing that. I really need a little bit of an oomph, a little bit of support here to revive my channel in the way that YouTube has punished me in some form of being honest for doing, I guess. Uh, and I know that sentence made absolutely no sense. And again, I'm going to blame Mercury retrograde. So I thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have the best week you could possibly have. I send you so much love and we'll talk to you soon.